Hello, it's Scott Manley here. On December 30th, Iran attempted to launch a set of satellites into orbit with their Cymorg rocket. This would be the last launch of the year, but not for Iran, because Iran uses the Persian calendar, which, as I'm sure you all know, has its years aligned to the vernal equinoxes. And as an astronomer, that actually makes a lot more sense than our weird Roman-derived Gregorian calendar. But for those of you out there still using this antiquated, less accurate Gregorian calendar, which is most of you, Happy New Year! Happy 2022! But yes, back to the Cymorg. Uh, they were launching, officially they announced they were launching three satellites. I believe it was a major primary payload with a couple of CubeSats on the side. And this is the first time Iran has attempted to launch more than one satellite on a rocket. However, it appears the attempt was not successful and they did not achieve orbit. So we're not quite sure exactly where they ended up, but the official statement said that they achieved a velocity of 7,350 meters per second, which uh, by my math is about 250 meters per second short. So the perigee would be inside of the earth and very likely the satellites burned up over the Indian Ocean, you know, about you know, minutes, less than half an hour after launch. Um, you know, there's some question about the exact velocity needed because of, of reference frames. So yeah, this is, uh, I believe, the sixth failure for a Cymorg rocket, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll go into that. The Cymorg is actually derived, it's the sort of new generation of rocket. Back uh, in 2010, I believe it was announced, the year after, on the anniversary of the launch of OMID, which was Iran's first domestically launched satellite, that used a Saphir rocket. Now, uh, the Saphir is a much smaller launch vehicle. It's derived in turn from the Shahab 3, which is a ballistic missile. And that ballistic missile, if you look at its lineage, if you follow its rocket DNA all the way back, then it's actually derived from a Scud missile by way of North Korea. Uh, North Korea and Iran have a lot going on together in terms of their rockets and uh, your ballistic missiles. They've shared a lot of technology and solved a lot of problems together, and there's a lot of similarities we see between them. In fact, the first stage of the Cymorg looks very close to the first stage of the North Korean Unha. However, the Unha has been far more successful, and it has a completely different second stage. Anyway, yeah, if you want to know more about this, uh, you know, the rockets of these two countries, you should watch my video on the subject, which explains this in more detail. So yeah, the Saphir, just for reference, it's a 26-ton, two-stage rocket. The first stage is burning kerosene and red-fuming nitric acid. The second stage uses a UDMH and nitrogen tetroxide. Both stages basically burning really nasty propellants, and I believe this uh, propellant mixture is also used on Cymorg. Uh, yeah, it could put about 50 kilograms into low Earth orbit using that, and it did so successfully four times. I believe that it also had four, uh, four suborbital flights, one of which was intentional. The final flight of the Saphir rocket was very unsuccessful, so much that it I know it RUD'd on the pad and there was a lot of damage visible. And we know this not because Iran shared any images, but because the president of the US posted a, an image from a KH-11 spy satellite to Twitter. You know, uh, this was amazing. I, we've never seen spy satellite images with such clarity before, and it very much cemented the quality and capabilities of these highly classified instruments. We, yeah, we could see the damage to the site from this. So anyway, uh, Saphir was re being retired and Cymorg is supposed to replace it. It's much bigger, it's about 87 tons, again, has two stages, burns the same propellant, and should, yeah, should be able to put 350 kilograms into low Earth orbit. So the Cymorg does this by using the same engine on the first stage as the Saphir, but it has four of them. It also has four little vernier thrusters for steering. The Saphir, it would get its steering by having a fixed engine with a, you know, graphite vanes to steer the rocket exhaust and get thrust vectoring uh, on that first stage. The second stage of the Cymorg instead uses four small rocket motors to, to boost it. It's believed that these four engines are derived from uh, a Soviet era you know, ballistic missile. I think it was an SLBM actually, the Vernier thrusters from this engine. I'm not sure exactly, but that is what has actually been causing 
many of the launch failures. So Cymorg has launched six times, I believe, and every single one has been suborbital. To be fair though, the very first launch was supposed to be suborbital. All of the later ones have been unintentionally suborbital due to some shortcoming somewhere in the technology. Uh, the fifth one wasn't even talked about. That was in June of 2021, and uh, Iran denies that there was a launch, but uh, Western intelligence agencies reported that there was a launch and they, uh, they talked about the data. So um, probably there was a launch, but we don't know for sure. Now, all of these launched from the Semnam Space Center, also known as the Imam Khomeini Space Center in the north of Iran, and they head to the southeast. They have to thread their way between neighboring countries so they don't overfly their airspace. Um, and that puts them on roughly a 60 degree orbit that heads out over the Indian Ocean. We know this one went off in that trajectory because there are images on social media showing locals who found a fairing that had landed, you know, near their town. And I'm going to say, looking at the interior of this, a lot of people saw right away that the, the you know, the grid pattern that they had etched onto the surface for strength uh, did include, you know, Star of David. And in fact, yeah, if you draw lines, it does actually look like the flag of Israel. And I can't unsee that now it's been pointed out. Obviously, that is there for good structural engineering reasons, but I still can't not unsee this, uh, this thing. Now, look, I'm sure there are many of you out, out there who are thinking, Scott, you're being far too gullible. This is very clearly a ballistic missile program masquerading as a space program. I mean, after all, the US and Russia both did exactly the same thing. But I'm, I'm going to say I'm pretty confident that the Cymorg is not a ballistic missile in testing for the simple reason, well, for many reasons. Firstly, the Cymorg is very poorly designed as a ballistic missile system. It needs complex ground support equipment. It needs to be vertically integrated. It's not good. But Iran also has a pretty public you know, ballistic missile program, right? And why would you bother hiding a ballistic missile in a civilian space program when you have a publicly acknowledged ballistic missile program? So there's two space programs in uh in Iran. One of them is the Iranian Space Agency and they report to the president who of course is underneath the supreme leader. Then there's the Revolutionary Guard, you know, the military. They report directly to the supreme leader and they have been developing their own space launch vehicles, like the Cassette, which has been uh, actually was quite successful. Now, they are developing ballistic missiles, but the you know the official edict from uh, Ali Khamenei is that they're they are not allowed to develop missiles longer than two thousand kilometer range, which is probably why the Revolutionary Guard is very interested in developing space launch vehicles with you know large solid rocket motors because it gives them at least experience in building intercontinental designs, even if they are instructed that they will never be allowed to use such a thing. Anyway, moving onwards, it, the thing is, it's very likely that we're going to see a lot more launches from the Iranian space program in the coming few years. There's been a change in power at the top. A new president has been voted in. Iranian presidents, they're allowed two terms in office. The previous president was Hassan Rouhani, who I think came in like 2012 or thereabouts. And you know, he was, he was much more progressive. He actually came in saying that he wanted to uh, you know, restore relations with uh, many Western powers. And he, sorry, he resided over the Iran nuclear deal, which was really helpful in easing sanctions on the country. And he was quite popular. He got voted into office for a second term. And, uh, you know, he didn't seem to be that interested in the domestic space program that Iran was working on. Um, but the more recent election, things changed, right? So, while everyone's allowed to vote in Iran, while everyone over 18 is allowed to vote, the candidates that are allowed are have to be approved. And pretty much the only candidates that were approved off were, you know, hardliners that were anti-West. And uh, yeah, turns out that when they had a, a record low turnout and a huge number of spoiled votes. But the guy that came in was uh, Ibrahim Raisi who has, uh, yeah, again, he's a hardliner and has some interesting history, but he has come in saying that he is much more focused. He wants to promote 
Iran's space program. He says that, that nuclear, um, ballistic missiles and space technology are three things that Iran needs to have to stand as a world power. And they are putting a lot of effort and energy into those now. The when you know the new press people came in, they talked about how the previous administration had let this space program wither and had uh, decayed and they were going to make it resurgent and bring it back. So under this, assuming that they are actually given the funding, it's very likely that we're going to see more launches, both on the military and the civilian side of things. And we might actually start to see some successes on the Cymorg rocket since it looks like they got very, very close. And so, yeah, this is where we get into like international politics. And I'm not really that good at talking about exactly what goes on. But I do understand that the treaties, the UN treaties that give the US and Russia the rights to overfly satellites over each territory also protect other countries with peaceful, peaceful space programs, including Iran. Then nevertheless, despite treaties making this totally legal, there will be people who will argue that Iran should not be allowed to do this. And I'm not sure what legal basis they have for this, just other than, hey, I want to try and get votes. Um, if you really want to find out more about this, then I would suggest that a number of the animations in this video are by people from Middlebury uh, Institute for International Studies at Monterey. And they do think about this. This is kind of their main thing. And I'll, I'll put some links to their work here. Uh, <laughs> but yes, uh, we're going to see a lot more launches from Iran in the future. And probably start to see a lot more successful ones. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.